Well, give me a team and a good lead dog and a sled that's built so fine. And let me race those miles to Nome 1049. Then when I get back to my home, hey, I can tell my tale. I did, I did, I did, yeah, I did a right trail. Well, I published a video on a lot of our winter operations. Just when I thought I had covered everything, I realized that uh, there might be another way to do this. It's one thing to mitigate the freezing breather. You know, set up an ox tank and the generator will run all night. You know, you got to carry up, carry around a, but you have to carry around a, a jury jug in the airplane. You know, and that couldn't cause problems. And sitting back and looking at the airplane, I realized, you know, the airplane carries enough fuel to run this generator for probably a year. So I looked at ways to use the airplane as an auxiliary source for powering the generator. That's going to alleviate the issue of having to carry a jury jug and, and make sure you get it filled up and, and servicing it. So I've come up with two ways to plumb the airplane fuel system directly to the generator. So let me show you how it works. Well, if you're interested in exploring this option and setting up a uh, source of fuel to power the generator, I'll outline uh, a couple of options. This is the 185 fuel system, and just after the firewall is the fuel shutoff valve, which is controlled from a knob right next to the fuel selector, and below this is a fuel sump. There's also the main strainer that's forward of the firewall that has an automatic uh, drain on it, and both of these drains are 8 inch, at least on my airplane, are 8 inch NTP or 8 inch pipe. So it's really easy to plumb into these two locations. If you look at the Cessna 180 fuel system, well, of course, you got the selector valve. There is a drain plug, which probably is uh, difficult to access, but then you have the same fuel strainer that you have in the 185, and the outlet of that fuel strainer is also 8th inch NTP, 8th inch pipe. So there's a couple of sources that you can pick off for a fuel source to your generator. If you have uh, another, all airplanes have a fuel sump and a fuel strainer up in the firewall area, and chances are the strainer will have an outlet that you can plumb to to uh, pull fuel off of to run your generator. Uh, the way that you would do it is explore your option, figure out how you're going to plumb it in. Once you determine that, or your mechanic determines that, uh, you can shut the fuel shutoff valve or pull the p fuel shutoff in the 185. You can drain the fuel system downstream of the shutoff, and then you can plumb in your, your uh, auxiliary fuel source. Here you can see I have fuel hoses coming from two locations. I plumbed both out of the f engine fuel sump and also out of the fuel sump that's just below the fuel shutoff valve. That's the one that's in the center there with the, uh, the on-off valve. I wanted to plumb an alternate fuel source from both locations. I wasn't sure exactly which one would possibly work best. You can easily see the fuel sump. And so the fuel sump I've plumbed in uh, eighth inch pipe to a number four hose fitting and then there's my source hose going to the generator okay and then also I plumbed in from the sump that's below the firewall shutoff valve on the 185 I put an eighth inch T fitting and plumbed it with a eighth inch ball valve and then a number four hose fitting and there's my hose source. I think I'm going to use this as my primary. I've got the shutoff valve where I have the AN4 hose fitting. I, on order I have a quick disconnect. So I'm going to hook a quick disconnect to this location and as a safety I've got the fuel shutoff valve and you can see the sump drain has been retained in the bottom of the T fitting. So I like this setup better once you put the airplane to bed, all you got to do is hook up the quick disconnect, turn the fuel selector on, start your Honda generator, and it'll run for a year. Pretty cool. Well, the reason I like the setup 
with the sump drain just below the shutoff valve is you just hook a quick disconnect up and throw a lever. If you're using the engine strainer sump, the problem is, is you have a fuel strainer valve. You can see it right there. And you got to pull the fuel strainer valve and it's spring loaded back in. Well, if you look very carefully, I bent a piece of welding rod. And so once I'm all hooked up, I can pull the fuel strainer, hook it in some way, keep the fuel strainer open, and there's my fuel supply for the Honda generator. So that's how I've uh, mitigated that issue. So it's a little more work. One thing about plumbing the aircraft into the generator, I recommend you use high quality AN fittings and you make sure that it's done very securely. If you develop a leak, it could be very hazardous. You're going to drain your 80 gallons of fuel onto the ramp and who knows what could happen. So the other concern would be the legality of doing this. Well, I think to do it yourself, if you put a fitting on the outlet of the sump, and then you only use that on the ground, ground use only, that's something you could do yourself. You're not making any modifications or changes to your aircraft. If you plumb it into a, a different sump or a belly sump, but you're putting in T-fittings and such, I, you're not altering the aircraft fuel system. And your mechanic could easily do that for you with just a logbook entry doing a minor alteration. And I think that would be legal. So. That's my input on plumbing your aircraft to uh, uh, a generator and being able to mitigate the issue of having to carry extra jury jug and, and refueling it and the possibility of leaking the airplane. Plumb your generator right to the airplane. Doesn't get much easier than that. And here's some thoughts on plumbing your aircraft right to the generator. If you end up with any leaks, it could be pretty catastrophic, so I think I figured out a way to mitigate that issue. Check it out. Here's the fuel flow with the gravity feed, static pressure through a quarter inch line. This is flowing about a gallon a minute. The, the Honda generator at max load consumes about a gallon every four hours. So with this flow at a gallon a minute through a quarter inch line, that's uh, quite a bit. Here's what you can do to make a restrictor. You need a AD rivet number five. The AD rivet has a little dimple right in the center of it. And here's a number 53 drill. And just drill a hole right through the center of the rivet. So here's the rivet with the restrictor in place. You just drop it right in the AN4 fitting and then you can put in your hose end right on top of it. Snug it up and snug it up nicely. And this will not leak. This will do really quite nicely. I'll show you what kind of flow we're going to get now. Now here's the fuel flow through a restrictor. This is about one-fourth the normal flow through the quarter-inch line. So this is a way to mitigate some of the issues uh, with leaks. At least if you do get a leak, uh, you're minimizing it. With a good quality uh, Stratoflex line and AN fittings going to the generator, the uh, likelihood of a leak is pretty minimal. The problem could be with the float in the carburetor could stick open. That typically would flood the generator and the generator would quit and it would continue venting fuel onto the ramp, but at least you're going to be venting, at least you'll be venting a quantity of fuel far less than a, an open quarter inch line. Way up in Alaska, the state that stands alone, there's a dog race run from Anchorage in the Nome. And it's a grueling race with a lightning pace with the chilly winds do wail Beneath the northern lights cross snow and the ice and it's called the Iditarod Trail We'll give me a team and a good lead dog and a sled that's built so fine And let me race those miles to Nome 1049 Then when I get back to my home, hey I can tell my tale I did, I did.